It's Matt Luscious and welcome to my newest video. So today I just wanted to do a voiceover of my leg day. I do squats, um, RDLs, leg extensions, leg curls, hack squat, and calf raises. And then I also do some bench and bent over rows. So it's kind of like a full body barbell workout, but mainly focusing on legs. So today, I'm going to be talking about five techniques that you can use to help you reach your fitness goals. So if you need to want to be better at fitness and want to reach your fitness goals, the first number one technique that I recommend you do is be consistent. So if you haven't started at the gym and you want to start, you just have to understand that Going to the gym once a, once a week or twice a week, it's not really gonna cut it. When you're starting off, you really have to push it and go hard. You have to be going at least, at the very least, three times a week. And you gotta be, um, you gotta be consistent with it. You can't just show up one time, one time every couple of days. You always have to be coming back. So when you start working out, you're gonna find it hard to be consistent because you're not used to having to commit to something of such great stress. And when you go for the first time, you're gonna, it's gonna feel really stressful, but you just gotta be consistent with it. And if you're consistent at the gym, then you're gonna see results. For me, it's not hard for me to stay consistent because I love the gym and I love going hard. So I'm always excited for my next workout. But when you're, when you're at home and you're thinking, oh, should I go to the gym today? I don't really want to. Just go and go hard. And yeah, that's, you just have to do that because consistency is key. When you first start working out and you, and you go hard, if you are working out three times a week or even more than that, and you're letting your, if you're letting your body recover, you're not working out sore muscles, then you're going to see, start to see results pretty fast. It's something that we call newbie gains. So newbie gains are when you're, you're, you never work out, you're, you have no muscle mass and then you start to work out and then you start to see gains really fast. And that's called newbie gains. So when you see when you start to see your newbie gains show up, you're gonna be like, wow, I see I see some nice results, and it'll motivate you to continue to be consistent. So if you are always um, being consistent at the gym, you're gonna constantly get stronger as well, and you're not gonna be losing size. If you take t if you are consistent for say a month, and then the next month you're not very consistent, you're gonna lose those gains. So it's really important for you to just stay consistent at all times so yeah that's the first technique if you're not consistent at the gym you're not going to get very far because consistency is key and uh yeah so i just want to explain what i'm doing here so as you can see this is my last set of five for 315 i just did a five by five for squats i thought well my, my i'm not that strong right now for legs but i still want to get a good strength and hypertrophy workout in for my legs so i just did 315 for five sets of five did a little pause squat there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna bring up the belt soon. Never worn a belt for squats, but I think I might. All right, so the second technique I'm gonna talk about is train hard. So if you you can be consistent, but if you're consistently training like a little biatch, then you're not gonna be getting very luscious. You have to be training hard when you go to the gym. So when I work out, I don't always, when I, when I, Sometimes I do, but usually I don't count my reps all the time. I just go until it, like I, I wait till it starts to hurt and then I keep going for a few more reps after it starts to hurt and then I stop. But when when you actually start to feel the pain in the muscles set in, that's when you're actually doing the damage and that's when you have to push harder and harder and it's all in the mind. So say if you're consistently going to the gym, talking about technique one again, you're consistently going to the gym three times a week, but you're only there for uh, let's say one hour and you're you're talking to your buddies half the time and you're just you're just uh, doing like a couple sets here a couple sets there not not really structuring your workout then 
no matter how long you've been consistent for, you're not going to see results because you're not pushing yourself and you're not training hard. You you can do you can do bicep curls all day, but if you're but if you're not struggling to get that last rep, then you're not going to be growing. Like if you if you uh, see so yeah, you you don't see my face here, so you can't see that I'm trying really hard. But I'm honestly like I'm you can see that I'm actually doing full range of motion. And it looks pretty easy, but I'm actually pushing myself really hard when I do these exercises because no pain, no gain. If you ever heard that saying, it's very true. And if you want to be successful in anything, you have to try hard. So when you go to the gym, just, just make sure if you haven't yet, or if you already go to the gym, just make sure that you have a plan when you go into the gym. I don't always have a plan, but it's important to have a plan and just make sure you're pushing yourself hard. Don't be just screwing around and be like, oh, I've been here for an hour, time to leave. You could be in the gym for 20 or 30 minutes and have a better workout than some people do in two hours just because of the intensity. And to change the intensity, you could lower your rest times, increase weight, increase reps, uh, time under tension, how long you're doing the set for, all these ways to make your exercise harder. You don't want to make it easier, you want to make it harder. And you can see I'm just doing some hack squats here. Did a little bit too heavy weight, but that's good sometimes because you want to make sure you're training hard. All right, so te technique number three is if you're underweight, eat more. It's very simple. If you're a skinny guy and you're looking to get gains, the best thing you can do on top of the previous two techniques, being consistent and training hard, is eating more. Now, I'm not talking about eating more donuts, eat more cookies. You can do that if you want, but you're going to feel like crap and you're going to get sick. If you want to see results with those two things, you have to be eating a lot of food if you're skinny. So if, you, if, you, if you're if you saying, well, well I'm, eating, I'm eating all day long, like I'm eating tons of food, well, eat more then. But I, I feel full, I feel so full. No, 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 you got to eat more. A lot of people, there's a lot of people nowadays, especially younger people who um, are underweight and they're working out, but they're not really seeing that much results. And you have to be eating big. You gotta eat big to get big. If you know the legend Rich Piana, that's what he always said. He lived by that saying, eat big to get big. God damn it, and it's actually really true. Lots of truth to it. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking about eating crap. You have to be eating whole calorie dense foods that are high in protein, I would say. Um, even high in carbs, but as long as they're not uh, processed carbs. So like your lean protein, such as chicken, um, tuna, salmon, beef, if you can afford grass-fed and organic, that's the best way to go. You can eat eggs. Whole eggs is good because then you get the fat, which is healthy fat from the yolks, and just eat a lot of it. You can track your calories if you want. The best way to do it is just eating until you're full and then working, like just also working out hard and just eating until you're full all the time. And when you're not full anymore, then eat again. And just constantly eat till you're full. And then when you're not full, eat more until you're full again. Just keep doing that and just... Pretty much, if you're underweight and you're trying to gain weight, you just need to be eating uh, in a calorie surplus um, to the point that your body hasn't adapted to yet, so then you put in weight, you don't burn it off, because people, if you have a fast metabolism, you're gonna have to eat till you're sick a lot of the time. If you're not feeling, if you're not bloated and you're not feeling like crap when you're, when you're force feeding, then you're not gonna be growing, which is a sad reality. For me, for most, for, the past, uh, not this year, but not this last year, but the year, the year or two before that, I was actually, uh, I had to work really hard to eat a ton of food because I'm actually a hard gainer myself. I struggled to put on weight, so I had to eat a ton of food. And I, I was small for very long, and then I, I finally climbed over my plateau about two years ago. But now I don't always eat that big because I, I kind of put on a bit of fat because I was eating a lot of carbs. So yeah, if you're underweight, eat more. So. The fourth technique I want to talk to you about is if you're overweight, eat less. Again, very simple, but people overthink it and say, well, is it, can I, should, should I try this diet? Should I try that diet to lose weight? What should I do to lose weight? Well, just be consistent at the gym, train hard, and if, you need, if you're overweight and need to lose fat, then eat less. Now, I'm not talking about starving yourself. If you're, if you're really overweight, if you're like, 300 pounds overweight or 400 pounds overweight, then you should starve yourself for a day or two maybe. And that would, that might, that might help you lose a ton of weight really fast, but I, I don't recommend it because I'm not, I'm not your doctor. So like Greg Doucette says, I'm not your doctor. So don't listen to what I say, but just take it with a grain of salt. So when you're trying to lose weight, 
you want to be in, in a calorie deficit. So the best way to find out how much calories you have to take away is for a week, if you're overweight, just for a week, track your calories, write down all the calories you eat, look on the back nutrition label, look at how much you ate of the food and check out how much calories you ate and track that for a whole week. Now, the, set, the week after that, make sure you're eating, like maybe you could subtract 500 calories from that per day. So whatever you, whatever amount of calories you ate per day, subtract 500 calories from that to start out and see how that works for you. Just keep doing that until you stop losing weight and then subtract another 500 calories. And, and, but if 500 is too much for you, you find, then just subtract 200. It's just um, little by little eating less food. It'll help you lose weight because that's the only thing that will cause you to lose weight is a calorie deficit. You could be eating McDonald's every day and, and lose weight. You could be eating uh, grilled cheese every day and still lose weight. But you just have to be in a calorie deficit. And I, did, I never understood that like until now. Um, because I would always say, well, like I never had to always lose weight, but I would, I never had to lose weight. Um, I only care about gaining size. Cause like I said, I'm a hard gainer, but now I'm trying to get shredded because I put, I put on a decent amount of fat and I actually thought I was shredded, but I wasn't. And now I'm actually starting to get lean and it's because I'm fasting throughout most of my day, which actually makes it fairly easy to be in a calorie deficit because then you only have, I, I don't eat until like five or 6 PM at the eat it afternoon every day. So that only gives me a small period to eat. And I don't, I don't shove my face full of food. I'll eat one meal at five or 6 PM. And then I won't eat again until one thirty in the morning and then I'll go to bed. So it, it makes that technique for me is really easy. I just drink black coffee and water and then it helps me stay full. And I work out hard. I kind of get lightheaded. Sometimes if I'm really going hard at the gym or working out really hard and I need, and I need to have fuel to have a good workout, then I will maybe have an apple or some small thing of carbs just to power me through the workout, but only fruit for that sort of thing. Yeah, so I just finished up my legs and uh, my quad extensions and curls, leg curls, and now I'm just doing some bench. Kept it light today because uh, my shoulder is kind of acting up. So the final technique I'm gonna talk about with you guys is don't stop trying. As cliche as it sounds, you have to not give up. If you are consistent and you're training hard and you're, you're, you're not seeing results, then try something else. Try changing up your workout program. Try getting a trainer. Try looking up videos on how to be uh, more effective in the gym. Many techniques you can use to better yourself and you have to, you have to just not give up no matter what. I remember when I started working out, I saw some results for the first couple months and then I and then I started to like see, oh, I'm not like I'm not progressing as fast as I was at the beginning. My new beginnings have kind of faded away and worn off. And then, because as you continue to work out, it's harder to uh, obtain more gains. So the first, like I said, the new beginnings, the first couple months you're working out, you're seeing lots of results, but you're not getting huge. But you're seeing muscular results and muscular strength improvements. And then the second year comes around, and it's you're only getting stronger maybe every month. And then three years later, you're, you're only getting strong, like maybe every couple months and it's, it's, it's longer, it takes longer and longer and you plateau more often. So you have to constantly change up what you're doing, but you just have to keep trying. Just don't stop. Don't stop pushing yourself at the gym. You just have to keep going hard. And I know you've heard it before, but it's the truth because I remember, I remember myself, um, there was, there was a, for the first, I couldn't bench 225 for one rep until about three and a half years after I started working out. And there was people who were working out for only a year and they were able to bench 225. And I, and I said to myself, like, how come this is the case? So like, is it cause I'm light? Is it cause that's heavy weight? No, it's just cause I wasn't changing up my routine enough and I wasn't giving my muscles a break. I was doing the same thing all the time. I wasn't changing up the days I was doing certain body parts. I had the same routine every week and the muscles got used to it. So if I wanted to get stronger, I knew that I had to change up something. and. That's what you learn as you continue to work out. You have to just continue changing what you're doing. And sometimes that's changing what you're doing is not, is not training harder. Sometimes it's, it's, it's set, taking back a step. Like for myself, t uh, taking a step back in these uh, last couple months of lifting, these last year or so, maybe six or 12 months, um, taking a step back and going easier has actually helped me progress and get stronger. Like since the quarantine happened, since this coronavirus, I've actually gained 
uh, three reps on my 225 max bench, max rep bench press, just because all I'm doing for chest now is bench twice a week, and I'll do a heavy day and a light day, and I'll do my heavy day. Will, my heavy day will be on Fridays, and my light day will be on Tuesdays, and I'll do different rep, range, rep ranges, which actually help me. Um, before I would just go up to a one rep max and then drop the weight, maybe 20 pounds, do as many as I can, drop the weight another 20 pounds, do as many as I can. I would just do that, which is good for gains, but it would get my shoulder really injured. I, ha I have tendonitis in my left shoulder, so um, just going easy really helped me with that. And you can see I'm doing, a, so for bent over rows here, I, I chose to do underhand grip, and I started off with 135, and then I did three sets of, I think, I think, six to eight reps I think I did. I think the last set I got 10. But yeah, I'm just really pushing myself hard here. Here, see for bent over rows, I don't care too much about the weight. But again, since quarantine happened, my bench, my bent over row, sorry, has actually gotten stronger because I'm not doing an incredible amount of variations for each exercise. Like when I'm at the gym, I was so addicted to, to going hard that I was doing like six sets for each exercise and doing like seven different exercises for each muscle group. And just, I was just going balls to the wall each time, which is not the best thing to do. And so sometimes uh, not giving up is it, when you're not seeing improvements, you just need to take a step back. But for most of you guys who are listening, maybe you haven't, like you probably haven't started working out or you maybe you just, uh, you're just, you just want to change your body, but you don't know how yet. Just remember that the hard work does pay off and you won't regret it. So yeah, those are my five techniques to help you um, improve your fitness journey and uh, to help you reach your fitness goals. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Here I'm just finishing up with some calf raises. And yeah, I had a pretty good workout. I just did a couple sets here just to finish off because I'm wearing shorts a lot, so got to keep my calves aesthetic. And also, to you guys who um, just watched my whole video and don't watch the end, you should watch the end because I always do a little flexing compilation that might get you pumped up. Anyways, guys, stay luscious.